You would think when I do one of my podcasting episodes, I would actually talk about podcasting once a while. Well, I'm going to do that right now, believe it or not. So let's go and talk about it. Fred Jacobs, who is a radio consultant extraordinaire, he put out a story on his blog that was titled, When Will the Celebrity Podcast Bubble Burst? So he's mentioning that there's so many new podcasts that have been added because of the pandemic. We know that is very clear. And we've talked about how some of the celebrities out there, when they've been unable to go ahead and, you know, work behind the camera, work on scripts, work on acting, which is what's supposed to be their, you know, their career, right? They have to find something else to continue to keep themselves relevant and exposed so that people will not forget them. And that's the whole point. So this is what happens here. So there's a new story from Digiday that he cites from Sarah Guaglione about two impressive podcast podcasting growth metrics. One is from an eMarketer project that says that ad spending on podcasts will break $1 billion for the first time in 2021. A billion dollars in ad sales. Wow. And a consulting firm, Altman Solon, predicts global monthly listeners of podcasts will increase 20% a year between now and 2023. So podcasting, people are flocking to it more and more, but of course there's more content out there than there ever was before. It's not the same kind of transition as you would see for streaming media, but it's somewhat like that. Video is much different than it is for audio. We already know that for the most part. Now that also includes, when you're talking about audio, you're talking about pod, radio, podcasts, and audiobooks, streaming radio, podcasts, and audiobooks. So, so one of the stats that the XL also put over here as well is the fact that when you look at a new podcast by year, in 2019, we had a little under 300,000 new podcasts, and then it grew to over 800,000 by last year. That's just crazy. Now, in the story, he says, it's hard, hard to imagine podcasting will experience another growth spurt, anything like the one that took place last year. While many new podcasts were created around the COVID theme, other categories also blossom, especially celebrity podcasts. The lack of activity in movie and TV production, the decrease in book tours, even the cutback on pro and college sports directed a lot of energy into the podcasting space, and boredom has a way of doing that. Again, I even I added an extra podcast series by doing one of the podcasting, just how it works. So you can imagine all those agents looking, advising their famous clients, looking for something to do, start a podcast. So many did. And now it seems like a day doesn't go by without a major announcement of the launch of a podcast by a household name from politics, pop culture, or sports. Who isn't doing a podcast might be the better question at this point. And that's what they're talking about. When you look at some of the names that are out there, Paris Hilton has one. Michelle Obama has one. Bill Clinton has one. Uh, Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett do one called Smartless. Rob Lowe has one called Literally. Like just it's, it's crazy. And that's the plan. And then also a new podcast that was done with Barack Obama and Pre and Bruce Springsteen doing their own podcast. Did we ask for that? I don't know, but maybe somebody listened to it. I, just not for me. It just I can't. You know, radio is. We don't. This is the same idea where Sirius XM came into play, Sirius or XM satellite radio, where Sirius decided to go and put celebrities into the radio aspect, which never worked for me. As a radio file, I never was interested in hearing certain stars going, come on in all of a sudden, okay, go ahead and do a show here. No, it never worked for me. I just never got interested in that. And how many stars do you know of that have been able to go make the transition from video to audio? Very tough. And also, if you're just a good public speaker, yeah, it, listen, don't get me wrong, it works. But when you have somebody that's high profile, it's been around for a long time, you know, it's the content that has to be good. You just can't live off of the personality. That's kind of tough. You got to have something to go and back it up. Something that's got to be behind that or else it's just going to be a one-dimensional show and you're just going to have, you know, if it's just a fan podcast, it's just kind of fandom. Well, that's fine. But, you know, that's only going to get you so far. But that's what they're doing it for. It's not for the content itself because really they're just going to put some content. They're not going to be probably as frequent as someone like, some, like, someone like myself who puts out one of the podcasting episodes on a regular basis, right? Not to mention I put content to the YouTube channel. Plus I do weekly shows and I do content for two other major not, uh, podcasting networks. Like I put a lot of regular content out on a regular basis. So 
in its worst form. The Celebrity Podcast is even lazier than the cash grabby ghost written autobiography. Like the latter, Fred Jacobs is absolutely right right here. Like the latter, the former seems to also involve minimal effort from the headlining celeb with unnamed staff bearing the brunt of the hard work. Yep. Yep. It's never that person hosting the show. They have to have somebody to back them up. Why are we going to do that? That's just lazy. It really is. I can't tell you how many times I've had, we've had that happen where somebody feels like they need to have somebody else to be on the show with them to kind of piggyback and carry it up. And that sucks. That's what I don't want to hear about, but that's what they're doing. Now Paris Hilton's doing, doing a new show. Uh, she says that when it comes to what, well, I'm realizing I'm not the target audience for this is Paris. Do your best to get to this. Oh, actually he's talking about the preview of the show itself. So with the glut of podcasts hitting the marketplace, it puts immense pressure on producers with truly great pro concepts in mind. It was seen that most attention getting content, the ability to tell a compelling story, especially one that surprises and reveals, may be a key ingredient in the secret formula of churning out winning podcasts. When consumers admit, well, I didn't know that, when starting a podcast, the producers are well on their way to tor toward creating something special, maybe even important. And that's how buzz is created. Downloads exponentially grow and the money follows. Again, I read that one more time from Fred Jacobs. Most attention-getting content, telling a compelling, a compelling story that surprises and reveals is a key ingredient in a secret formula of turning out winning podcasts. And that's interesting. Now, there are other stories that are coming out, and, you know, you have so much micro niching into what you can find in a podcast. It is really interesting about that. So even for me to do a show that's very variety based, this little watercolor format that I do, you already know like my rotation of topics. It's just like a wheel of topics. And I'm just like, okay, this is what I'm going to talk about this week. It's kind of what the, uh, kind of the Maury Povich, Jerry Springer type of format is, you know, like, you know, there's a couple of shows. One of them is going to be Maury Povich has, you know, you are the father. You're not the father or that's just a lie. Or you're telling the truth, right? Or it's the uh, <laughs> few others like that, right? It's always those kind of ideas. So that's the idea there. It's too many podcasts. It's too many. And I mean, if I had to go and look at who has new shows out and why it's just not, it's just too much. Ashley Graham, the Plus Size Model has one. The big podcast with Shaq, which has been doing for a while. RuPaul has one. Oh, my God, man. This is crazy. Anna Ferris is unqualified, but she's been doing that for a while. Conan O'Brien needs a friend. And some of these just have shows just to have shows, which is just crazy. Snooki from Jersey Shore fame has one show, show called It's Happening. Lena Dunham has a show. <sighs> Tell you what, man. This is just crazy. Justin Long. Brandy Glanville for The Real Housewives. I forget which were Housewives, right? Mark Marin, but see, there's been some that's been around for a long time, like the real mainstays, the Joe Rogans, the Mark Marins. They've been around for a long time. Armchair Expert with Zach Shepard. I didn't realize he had a show now. This is crazy. Paul Dean has one. Julian Michaels has one. Like, who doesn't have one now, anyways? It's just crazy. And I can't, I just can't go through all that. It's just too much. And another story, British GQ actually put a story about this and made the point about stop podcasting, celebrities. This is truly, what was the best word, best word we're going to use for this? This is a pathetic, desperate attempt to seek attention. When celebrities are not able to do what they're supposed to be paid to do, they're doing this little concept they're probably not even spending the money. The thing is, you have some of these bigger companies out there, the Podcast Ones, the Wonderies, and all these, that say, oh, you know what? We need new content, and we need some shows that are going to bring some advertising. This is an ad grab. It's absolutely what Fred Jacobs says. It totally is. Now, that said, Ben Allen puts a story out and says that Some of the other names I can't believe we have. Okay, Matthew McConaughey, Rob Lowe, Will Arnett, Justin Bateman, Demi Moore, Jimmy Lee Curtis, Jake Gyllenhaal, all started up series in the last month, last year. This is crazy. And by the way, why are they doing this? Because big names can command fees of up to $3 million to start up non-scripted series. 
do you really think you're going to get that money back for just a voice? I don't understand the thought process on this. Again, yeah, the market's there for it. And if there's $3 million to make for a year to do that, how many of those shows are going to stick around and do something more after this? You know they're not. You know they're not going to do it. Once the pandemic is done and everyone can get back to work and production goes back up again, a lot of these shows are going to go away. You know it's pretty, pretty, pretty obvious. There's no doubt about it. So that's what the plan is right there. Hmm. Interesting. Now, Ben actually goes on with a story here in GQ's magazine in the UK. This is all well and good until you actually start to listen to some of these podcasts. While there are several stars who have established secondary careers as podcasters, as well as ex by executing well thought out premises. There are some examples where pandemic induced podcast series have been typically been less thought out. Then with the left of the lockdown, you have series that'll come on and there's a sense that this was born from the kind of boredom we have all felt of various stages of the last year. Then you have, okay, well, the hosts who are longtime friends have good chemistry. They spend most of the interviews falling over themselves to praise their guests. who are all, all often also friends of theirs. And other podcasts we have are bogged down by long and tedious games of remember when with pals. And if you ever hung out with a couple of acquaintances who are catching about your long term apart, you'll know what it feels like to listen to this podcast. Mind numbingly boring. Absolutely correct. In the worst form, the celebrity podcast is even lazier than the cash grabby ghost written autobiography, which is what Fred Jacobs pointed out. Like the latter, the former seems to also involve minimal effort with a headlining celeb with unnamed staff bringing the brunt of the hard work. He goes through a couple of the names that are doing the same thing. Now, they go after Paris Hilton pretty hardcore on it. I understand that. But again, you know, hey, if she's going to make money off of that too, she's dj She has her product lines. She has her modeling. She still does a lot of things right now. You know, what do you, what do you expect? I mean, for her to go ahead and not say no to when money's being probably offered to her, that's the problem. There are actually companies and people that are actually saying, oh, you know what? Well, they're going to go ahead and, you know, people are going to go ahead and go somewhere to be entertained. So they need to go to our celebrities. They must rely on our celebrities. Well, they're not, okay? Now, part of this as well, because he's talking about podcasting, Fred Jacobs and Ben Allen here, you know, some of this is video-based. If it's not video-based, then it might not do so well. But then again, you're not seeing your celebrities in a positive light. And you also need to make sure that these celebrities are putting out, pro you know, putting out quality product. And that's going to be tough. But again, you notice they're not going on to other TV shows and all. Like, I mean, I guess some of them are, but really it's like the podcast idea. It's, it's just like a fun little hobby to do. That's it. It's all it is. It's not like the ones that have been around for a long time. People like myself that have been around this for 15 plus years, 15 and a half years, as a matter of fact. So it is kind of disheartening and kind of frustrating to see people come in, come to the space. If it means more podcasts will be listened to, that, that's probably a good thing. If the advertisers stay around, that's the important thing. If they're going to be advertising to say, you know what, we need to stick around for this. I don't know if that's the case. And as for terrestrial radio, it's hurting them all together. So that's not good for them. Either which way, this is just something, this is a, a labor of ignorance and stubbornness and just really boredom. Because celebrities feel like they need to be doing something with themselves. They have to be productive because their agents or the other people are saying, you know, you got to make some money, you know, manager eight slash agent slash, you know, consultant. We need our commission. So you better make your money somewhere else. You need to keep working and do something you don't know how to do it. And that's what they're doing right now. So I have no interest listening to these celebrity podcasts. I never have, and I won't. Just not for me, you know. It's get, maybe, I mean, Even for me doing them all the time, maybe that's what my problem is, is that I just do them all the time. So what, what time do I have to listen to them? You know, I do have some time to listen to it, but I read to listen to audiobooks. And, you know, there's a way to kind of just keep myself more entrenched and to listen to information. Like, I, I, I envelop myself in the audiobooks more than anything else. 
when I'm not listening to podcasting. But when I'm not podcasting, no matter what work, I'm doing this show. And I keep doing it because the people are listening to it. But again, I also want to just be able to bring up stuff that just doesn't, normally doesn't come up. I don't want to do what these podcasters are doing, like, oh, get my friends up and schlum now. Because, you know, there might be some people that'll be, that will feel like it's cool. But again, these are celebrities that are also not going to be able to, they're not going to be uninhibited and uncensored and really going to tell themselves who they are. They're going to be completely open about themselves. No. They're going to go on and play their same shtick, the same persona that they put out there in the public. They're going to do that. They probably like it. They don't have to go out with a paparazzi acting all stupid. That's probably the other thing they like. You know, it's like they, they can kind of just control the persona that's being put out there. You know, they're not going to be confrontational or controversial. They're not going to do anything like that. So this is just saccharin. This is milk toast. This is like water. It's just bland. There's no flavor to it. That's what these celebrity podcasts are. But again, it's a cash grab. And just because there's a celebrity on it, and there's a possibility the celebrity will endorse a product, they'll do that. Trust me. If you're looking to advertise, go to the podcasters that are really doing something. You know what? WMR.FM, CannabisRadio.com. Hit me up. King of Podcasts at Yahoo.com. King of Podcasts at Yahoo.com. If you really want to advertise with well, somebody that's actually going to get your word out and it's actually going to turn around some return on your investment. Hit, up, hit me up and I'll get you the right people because we got good people doing good content that are not somebody podcasters out there. Okay? Just saying. Good on them for them to make some money, but I can see through this. And I hope you do too. I'll leave it there and I'll talk to you next time.